at the heart of our health service. Hello, Barnsley Emergency Department. Is the overstretched casualty team. Working around the clock under daily stress and strain. I've had 21 patients in the last hour. They're on the front line of emergency care. We've got a 30 year old overdose. Right. Suspected heart attack. We're idle three minutes. On call for our most vulnerable moments. You just keep your head nice and still for me, lovey, and let us do everything, OK? Facing life and death. They're just saying that your lungs are packed up and there's nothing that they can do about it. Sharing trauma and tears. What a superhero you were. With no time to catch their breath, a close-knit team who rely on each other. Come on, out of my way now, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us have work to do. <laughs> to get through the toughest of shifts, day in, day out. Anybody want anything doing? Fetching, carrying, back massage? Uh -oh! This is Barnsley Casualty 24-7. Got a soft spot for them all. Oh, well, don't tell anybody that, will you? Clocking on in casualty tonight, Sister Benita Wainwright. I hope you get sorted. I do. Behave yourself, won't you? I will. Consultant Dr Julian Humphrey. What did you dream about? Dogs in the playground. Dogs in the playground? Nurse Catherine Ravensdale. I don't know what it is about wounds. But I've always liked wounds. And lead nurse Tom Neild. There's no, no reason at all why you can't lead or manage anyone three times or four times your age. Job So get ready to share a shift with the team at Barnsley Casualty. Can't say big enough thank you. It's the start of a new shift, and the department is already busy, but understaffed. For the last 24 hours, we've just scraped the barrel to get the staff we needed, and then there's a couple of unexpected sicknesses that, that change that. There's nothing you can do. If people aren't well, they're not well. In the hub, it's the responsibility of lead nurse Tom Neild to find the staff to cover these shifts. Without working in it and being in it, on a daily basis, you'll fully understand the pressures um, and the challenges that we face in emergency departments. The word I'd use is relentless. It is just relentless. At 26, lead nurse Neil is the youngest manager of the department. You had a habit of calling me Babs when I first started. Yeah. Yeah. I worked here 24 years. So I started at 16. Hour three. There's no, no reason at all why you can't lead or manage anyone twice or three times or four times your age. Don't be cheeky. In the next 24 hours, the skeleton team will still treat over 200 patients in the 30 bays surrounding the main hub. After a long stint of back-to-back 12-hour -back night shifts, Sister Benita Wainwright is called in. Yes, yeah, so I got home and I was uh, absolutely zonked. She was straight to bed? Yeah, I was reading my hand over though. Do you know when I was writing my hand over? And I, I, Did I you think write I all that? No, I think I fell asleep because it trailed off. So she and my boys with my ex husbands my days off. I then have my two children, um, which actually can be more stressful than being at work. <laughs> Right, let's go. I've got a spare pair. Oh, you're later than me. <laughs> Hello, Barnsley Emergency. Fewer staff means more work for lead consultant Dr Julian Humphrey. It's his first shift back since his holiday. When you go to a Spanish island in late March, you expect a little bit of sunshine yeah, and you expect some <laughs> nice warm weather. What I was faced with is having to dress in gloves and a hat and longs. But I'm mentally recharged. 
ready for the next, um, the spring pressures, not the winter pressures anymore. It's now spring, isn't it? We've been battered this winter in terms of how busy and how stressful the department's been. And you definitely need to just go away from that. It's recovery time. Hello, Barnsley Emergency Department. Okay, female, 63 year old, suspected heart attack. Yeah, here it comes now, look. Dr Humphrey moves to recess bay one to prep for the arrival of the patient. Angela is suffering with a suspected heart attack. Do you want to just sit up a little bit more, my love? We'll just, uh, we'll just lift you up a little bit. Yeah, we'll do it for you, my love. We'll do it for you. One, two, three. There you go. Yes, yeah, so this is Angela. Angela's 63. No history of heart problems, just hypertension, cholesterol, and kidney failure. Um, two days ago, we began with like a right sided back pain. Right. Um, it's not gone away. Today, um, really severe, gone up into the neck, really clammy. We did think like, she was uh, 90 on air. So that's why we, we phoned up. Really. Just the way that she looked, she said she felt really, really unwell. Right. Okay. Patients who come with, with heart attacks may not come with this classical public perception of, them, of clutching your chest and being drip white and sweaty. And it's about not missing the, the clues that you're being given. Have you got any pain at the moment? It's still in my back. Still in your back? Yeah. What about if you breathe in? Is it worse? No, it's all right. Right. Does it feel very severe? Did it come on just like that, bang? Well, I've been in bed for two days. Right, I need a nurse. I'm here. Working alongside Dr Humphrey in recess today is sister Amanda Calvert. Just sit yourself forward, because I want to have a listen to the back of your chest. That's all right. Can I lift this up? Yeah. I like to fix things. I don't shy away from the uh, the challenges and the you know the difficult things that come into A and E. I'm up for it. Do you have any problems with your breathing, Angela? No. Okay. And have you been feverish the last few days? Shivery, hot? I've been shivering. You have been shivering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It definitely makes me reflect on my own mortality. I realise that life is very fragile and it can be taken away from you, like that. Do you feel well in yourself? No. Another reason for suddenly becoming short of breath is a clot on the lung. Yeah. So we'll need to just check that over as well. See if we can find a vein then and we'll uh, start doing some blood tests. Barnsley A and E. It's not just the patients who are unwell. The department is suffering without a full team. We are two nurses short. Has that gone out to agents there? In the hub, lead nurse Neil is doing his best to support the team who are now juggling extra patients. If you look at a typical family, there's moments of high, there's moments of low, there's arguments, there's agreements, there's disagreements, there's tears, there's there's every emotion. I think, yeah, we are. We've, we have all that and more. Some uniform. And he won't order me any. About six months I've been asking. We only give full uniform. Yeah, but I literally live here. <laughs> what you expect Or to we stay. want to stay. But he's just blatantly <laughs> said that they was hoping to phase me out. Is why he's not ordered me a new uniform. We're out open, we're trying. <laughs> Get your off duty. <laughs> yeah. Thanks anyway, I feel really supported in my place of work. I think it's really important to have a laugh and a joke. And if you can just make a joke or make somebody laugh, that you just keep going. It's it is, it's really important. And if nobody's laughing, then I'll make them laugh. <laughs> Blood sugar is 4.3. How far away? Yeah. Okay, it's about 10 minutes. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye bye. Sister Wainwright heads to recess with Dr. Sharif Adewunmi, 
they prepare for the arrival of a 78-year-old woman who's collapsed at home. I think when the red phone goes, it is exciting, and I think people always find that that's a weird way to describe it because it can be a life or death situation, but you can turn that situation around. How are we doing? Hazel has hypothermia, and the team desperately need to raise her temperature to stabilise her. Her son, Jimmy, is by her side. We don't know exactly what's happened, but she's fallen down, and one of her best friends, a neighbour, has found a trap behind the door. Uh, so she immediately called services, and here we are. How are you feeling, my dear? I'm just going to try and move it a bit. Can you put that That's it. That's it. Uh, do you just want this running free running? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Temperature reading, 33.8. She's got quite a lot going off, really. She's got a low temperature. She's been on the floor for quite a while. She's got shallow breathing and a blood sugar was in her boots. But she's a known insulin controlled diabetic, so she has a history of her blood sugars going up and down. She's just not a well lady at all. With resource patients, that's where my job satisfaction is, because I, that for me is where you can see a patient go from literally a life threatening position to actually getting them stabilised. To be part of that process is so rewarding. Hello, resource Benita speaking. I did, yes. Can I have a portable chest x-ray for an average size patient? Thank you very much. Yes. Bye. Nurse Catherine Ravensdale is next to clock on at the hub. My decorator never turned up. So now I was stuck indoors for two days bored. Looking after people, that's why I came into nursing. I like care of people. I am Bouncer born and bred. I've got a Bouncer accent, but everybody in Bouncer in Yorkshire's got a Yorkshire accent. I think you struggle to take that away from them. Nurse Ravensdale's first patient is baby George. Have we got a George Lockwood here? Yes. Oh, behind me. He's injured his arm and is constipated. All right, so what's been happening? He's just not been himself. He's had a bit of a chesty cough on the other weekend. He's not been that well, but he's just been screaming when we were out yeah, having a meal. He twisted yeah, his arm he when he was having a pabbe. And, sort of... and he's been holding it in the car, so I don't know if it is his arm. He's cried all the way in the car and screamed all the way. <laughs> and which arm is it? It's his right arm. So it's this one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, mummy. So we just, I'll just have a quick look at his arm. Hello. Can we have a look at this little arm? Yes. Uh, you're a brave little boy, aren't you? <laughs> He's not crying when I'm moving it. It's basically reassuring for the parent first because the child, they don't understand really what's going off sometimes, if they're quite young as it is, because they don't understand it's just a different, it's a foreign place to them. That looks OK. Oh, should we cover you back over? I don't think you're going to get cold in here somehow. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite warm. It's very warm. <laughs> With his arm fine, Nurse Ravensdale gives George a full medical check. Little tickle. Mm. Stop it, George. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we'll make it difficult. Can you see the little red light? That looks OK. I'm all finished. Hi. Yay! Mm. Did you say that you think George is constipated? 
Just make sure he's not having a lot of bananas. That's one thing he has been having. That's the problem. If he's having a lot of bananas, um, because he's got that much potassium in, it can cause some constipation. So that's probably where the problem's been going wrong. Too much bananas. Too much bananas. Do you have the fig biscuits? Yeah, fig biscuits. Because they've got prunes in, you know it, that's a natural laxative. And see if that works. All right. No worries. It's, it's always them old wife tales and tip prunes help with constipation. So, yeah, <laughs> my little fountain of knowledge retired. I said to her, why don't you try some fig biscuits? That sounds like it's a challenge. You tell her, I just work across sections and gynecology. Just have some figs, have it's some orange juice. Mm -hmm. Jack of all trade, master of none. Helping to lighten the workload in the department is volunteer Jane Allen. You don't want me to lay on top of you then, do you? What, eh? Share body heat, isn't that what they say? You share body heat, you get warmer. Bit better for you? Not worse than cold feet. My feet's cold, everything's cold. I'd like Barnsley Hospital to be the best it can possibly be. And I mean, I think it's my hospital because I am Barnsley born and bred. So it's just my way of giving a little bit of something back to my hospital that I rely on and I hope that I never need in an emergency, but if I do, I'd like to make sure I'm coming here. In Rhesus Bay 1, Dr Humphrey and Sister Calvert are treating 63-year-old Angela, who arrived with chest pains. Let's try and get a bit more blood towards your head. See if that improves your blood pressure. Okay, sharp scratch coming. Dr. Humphrey has ruled out a heart attack, but is unsure of the root cause of Angela's serious condition. So, X ray going to come around and do portable X ray, and I'll take that and get it. I should. So, antibiotics and some fluids. Here. Let me know when that chest X ray is done, and I'll come and have a look. Yeah. You you do have a second sense, this 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 feeling, this sort of the hairs in the back of your neck go up a little bit and think, oh, there's something not quite right here. The antibiotic I'm going to give you is a mixture of two different antibiotics. What's that for them? Well, I, we, with, we think that this back pain you're getting is a chest infection. Mm. Just couple that with the fact that your oxygen levels are a little bit low mm. and you don't have a diagnosed respiratory condition. Upper back kind of pain, more than likely is a chest infection, but we want the x-ray to confirm it. Being an emergency medicine doctor is all about problem solving. I'll ask you to breathe in and hold your breath, all right. We, we like the thrust and the, the adrenaline buzz of, of dealing with problems, and potentially in the recess room, a lot of them can be life-saving or life-challenging, life-threatening problems. You just keep nice and still. Thank you. I think it looks like there may be evidence of an infection there. Mm. Yeah. There's certainly something wrong with your chest. Yeah. Um, and that would fit with the levels of oxygen in your blood being a little bit low. Yeah. So I've given you some antibiotics. Right. We'll just wait until these other blood tests come back. Right. Um, and um, obviously, oh, I think I you're going to need to come into hospital just really to, to get to the bottom of this, really. OK? Yeah. I think my lady might be septic, that's what I think. I'll uh, work on that basis, I think. In neighbouring Recess Bay 2, 78-year-old Hazel is still being monitored by Sister Wainwright and Dr Adewunmi. How are you feeling? Not bad. Better for my company. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Must be desperate then. Shut up. <laughs> What do you remember last? I don't know. You don't know? That's all right. No, I spent most of the day. Sat up the settee. Yeah. Sister Wainwright, 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 Sister Wainwright,
got a bit more colour, which is reassuring, and she's alert and she's she's got no pain anywhere. I'm happier. Temperature's better. She's fab. Fab. I can't leave in them situations. You build up a report with a patient and the family and and I I find it very hard in those situations to just switch off. So I wanted to make sure that I'd done everything I could to make sure that she was going to be OK. She's snoring, isn't she? So she's on some antibiotics now. She's having some fluids. Get her blood sugar up. X-rayed her. She's got a catheter in that's monitoring her urine mm. output and uh, we'll scan her head just to make sure there's nothing going on yeah. with her head. Yeah? yeah. And then we'll get her upstairs yeah, if that's okay. Yeah, thank you very much. You alright? I'd have your cup of tea. Strong. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. You warming up? Yeah. Good. Put your hand back under. Behave yourself, won't you? I will. And I'll go make you a cup of tea. Me. Do you have a sugar in your tea? No. No. I'm going to put a little one in. Today. Yeah. I think I'm going to get a reputation for making brewers me. I can see it coming, can't I? I think a lot can be resolved with a cup of tea. <laughs> Certainly, a cup of tea is normality, isn't it? And gets past that. Oh, I'm in hospital. This is a horrific situation to be in. Some things can be fixed with a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to leave it on the side there. How have your nights been? Uh, uh, better, since you've not worked them. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> Sister Wainwright is in the hub. Covering for a colleague that's called in sick. <laughs> hey, Orp, it's only me. I know, but I just missed the sound of your voice. <laughs> I'm not smart, I've had an outburst yet, so I think it's going on. <laughs> <coughs> um, I've got a lady for x ray, which is in my, uh, minors, uh, cubicle three. <coughs> Yep. Lead nurse Neil is worried the extra hours are taking their toll on Sister Wainwright. OK, so staffing, so um, Benita is not feeling too well. So just going to have to keep an eye on her just to see if she's OK. <coughs> I don't rest. I'm just one of those people. And it gets for me to a point like that where I have to go, actually, no, now's the time, Benita. <laughs> Stop working. But there's no rest today. And Sister Wainwright's next patient, 70-year-old Jennifer, is waiting in Bay 4. What's got you into hospital today? Trouble breathing. OK, and how long has this been going on? Uh, well, I had pneumonia before Christmas. I lost uh, two or three days. Started with stuff before that. OK. It's pretty bad from now. Are you coughing at all? Yes. Are you coughing anything up? Uh, right. Yeah, Some nice deep breaths for me. Right, Bobby Bonnie, I'm going to put you a bit of oxygen on. Your oxygen levels are a little bit low. Hey, Flower. This lady, she's uh, basically chesty, short breath, um, had a slight wheeze. Um, she doesn't look particularly like she's working hard. However, she's worse on exertion, slightly tachycardic at 101 as well. Just if you wanted to have an x ray sooner rather than later. Thank you. I actually think I sound worse. <laughs> I think I sound worse, don't you? I think I sound worse. Because I'm really wheezy. And nobody cares about me. Right, I'll just go and sit. You'll do me that, and I'll just go and see if that patient can go from resource. Sister Jane Hawksworth is halfway through her 12 hour shift. Lovely. Yep, fine. Will you just let me know and then I can get him up? Yeah, that's fine. Cheers. 
because you have so many patients and you've got so many areas to try and work out who's where, what's happening with them. So that's where the delay is at the moment. Hi, Barnsley Emergency. The red phone is the heart of our phone system, if you like. Nobody knows the number to it, it's a big secret, um, apart from the ambulance people. Bye. Three people have been involved in a road traffic accident. The passengers have sustained minor injuries, but paramedics are concerned about damage to the driver's spine. The driver of a car involved in an RTC impact to offside front. She's had 10 milligrams of morphine for a pain that's 7 out of 10. She has an existing back problem already. No loss of consciousness. No loss of consciousness whatsoever, no. But all her uh, all two sats, everything's been all right. You just keep your head nice and still for me, lovey, and let us do everything, OK? So, I'm just going to have a little feel now, OK? Does it hurt there when I touch? No. No? I'd like you to try and turn your head to the right as far as you can. How far can you get it? That's perfect. Well done. Now try and turn your head to the left as far as you can. Lovely. Oh. So we can keep all that stuff off you now, all right? Ah! Oh! Is that your back? So we're going to have a proper feel of your back, OK? We need to roll you on your side safely so that we don't move anything around too much, OK? I just need a log roll. You do get screamers and you do get the people who are quiet and it's just about probing. But ultimately, if they're in pain and they say they're in pain, then we'll believe that they're in pain. Next being cleared, uh, no loss of consciousness, long-standing back problems, just got some pain in the back, had 10 milligrams of morphine, which is in quite a bit of pain when we took her off the scoop, so... So we're going to roll you. I'm going to have a feel down your back. Same as before, if it hurts a lot, tell me. I'm only going to roll about 15 degrees. Yeah. Okay, we'll go on and move. Ready, steady, move. That's fine. Just that part, that's fine, that's fine. Ah. Just there. Down near your bum. Yeah. Yeah, off yeah. to one side. Off to the left hand side. Just there. What about there? Yeah. Is it worse the lower down I go? <laughs> right, lovely, thank you. Okay, ready, steady, roll. Ah, is it just oh. the morphine you've had for the pain relief? Really? I'm guessing, yeah. Uh, yeah? What do you normally take for your back? Tramadol. How much? Yeah, 50 or 100? 50. 50. I don't like taking it unless I've caught so. Okay. Have you had 100 milligrams yeah. of tramadol before? Do you want to take the chance of that today to make you a bit more comfortable or do you just want 50? I'll take the 100. Yeah, I'm going to take the one. Most property, things get left, and so we put it in here hoping that at least they'll either come back for it or we can find out whose it is. Oh, yeah. Do you know, I could get a job, couldn't I? Security at airport, checking everybody's bits and pieces. The lovely, do you know, the lovely pair of pyjamas here that somebody's obviously taken care to. There's no name on them. So I did put a false leg under a trolley last week. I said, I'm going to put your name on this leg. He took it off. I said, I'm going to put your name on this leg and then it'll not go walk about. <laughs> Three hours after being admitted, Dr. Humphrey has a diagnosis for Angela in recess bay one. And bronchogram, so this is all consolidation here. It's mainly in the right lung. Yeah, yeah and there's a li you can't see the bottom, the bases are very blurred. And if you actually listen to her chest, she's a, it's quite dull down here. There's hardly any air getting in. How come she's not coughing anything up? Because it's probably an atypical pneumonia, maybe. I don't know. It just shows you can be look quite well, but... Mm. It's all about experience and instinct, where you use your clinical experience to and your, your second sight and your, your, your intuition to actually make decisions. Sometimes I'm wrong, but, you know, more times I'm right than I'm wrong. So, your blood tests show that you've got a significant infection. It looks very much like it's a chest infection, a pneumonia. The blood tests are actually markedly raised for infection. So you'll definitely need to come into hospital I think I'm going to give you some um, stronger antibiotics than I've already given you. I think it's a good job that you came today, actually, because if, if you'd left it any longer, it could have been life-threatening, I think. Right. OK? Yeah. In assessment bay one, 
Sister Hawksworth is with Leslie, who has severe back pain following a road traffic accident. What? I'm just going to pop you here, lovey, while I get you some pain relief and then we'll send you for the X-ray. Both passengers have escaped with minor injuries. Where were you going this morning? Are we nice? Charles Clifford Hospital. Oh, dental hospital at Sheffield? Mm, with my dad, yeah. Oh, right. So he's not going to get there today, then, is he? Has anybody phoned him up to let him know that you'll not be there? I think the young man said he was going to phone him. And... But your dad's all right, is he? He's down here somewhere. He's in a wheelchair, I think. With my sister. <laughs> The family out in then? Yeah. Stay at Barnsley and eat? It looks that way, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> oh, I think of better places. Yeah, yeah. Is it too tramadol now, darling? I will be rattling. <laughs> Did you know we were voted the number one department by F2 doctors in 2014? Yeah. It's a national survey of F2 doctors in training. The best department was Barnsley Emergency Department. Right, come through then. Dr Humphrey's next patient is six-year-old Alex, who's waiting for treatment in paediatric bay four. Are you Alex? Alexander? What do you like to be called? Alex. Alex, right, OK. And who have you brought with you today, Alex? Mum. Mum. Is she a nice mummy? Good. I do like dealing with children. I don't see very many children myself. I'm not quite sure what that is. I don't know, perhaps as I got older, I, I, they, they probably look at me and think, oh, my, you know, here comes my granddad to treat them, I think. How did you cut your eye open? I got hit by a golf club. A golf club? What are we going to do today? Uh, I'm going to focus on you. Yes. Uh, I'm going to... And what's going to, what's going to happen while you're having a little sleep? Have dreams. So when you've had some dreams and you wake up, what's going to happen to that cut above your, above your eye? It'll be gone. Well, it won't be gone, but it'll, be a little, it'll have some stitches in it, won't it? It'll be fixed. It'll look a lot better. Have you got anything you want to ask me? No. Have you got anything you want to ask? I don't think so, thank right. you. Yeah. All clear? We're all right, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. And you've not had anything to eat this morning, have you? All right, and he's normally fit and well, isn't he? Is. Yes. Yeah. Good. Right, we'll get it all sorted out, don't worry. Thank you. Thank OK, you all yours, Marius. Dr Marius Baltescu preps Alex for his procedure. These carpets. I don't think I've got this book. You've not got this one? Got this oh, you're missing one. out, Marius. <laughs> Worst bit, and you've done it really good. Well done. Yeah. All right, well, shall it. we go now? In the hub of Barnsley A and E, getting cover for staff who are off ill is a constant battle for lead nurse Neil. We are two nurses short, two down on nights as. Well, it's massive that they haven't been authorised. That leaves us massively short. Sister Wainwright has taken on an extra shift, but is now starting to get ill herself. <laughs> I don't rest. I have my annual leave. I come to work and I can feel it, like, creeping up on me, thinking, Vinny, you need to rest, you need to rest. But I just... I just don't switch off. OK, so staffing, Benita um, isn't feeling too well. <coughs> she might be going home, so you're potentially going to be one shot there, but we're just going to see how that goes. I'm going to go see her in a minute and see how she's getting on. Going to be a <coughs> tough afternoon. Right, let's get started then. Seven hours into his shift, Dr Humphrey is with six-year-old Alex in recess. 
You with us? He's been sedated so that his head can be stitched. I do view the situation from the parent's perspective, and I know that ketamine will give you this very odd appearance. Your child is going to look like the lights are on and there's no one at home. Yeah, okay. Let's see what, we, what we're like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up this eye so I don't get anything into the eye. But what I'm going to do first is give it a good clean, okay? If your child's eyes roll back and they look like they're not alive, you are going to be scared. In that situation, it's bring the parent to the child, reassure them, reassure them, reassure them. You okay, Mum? Yeah, he's doing really well. You can see this is quite deep. Right, so I'm going to put some local anaesthetic in. Now, this is your locking stitch. Now, I was that side, now I'm this side. Come back, grab that, and that's it. So what we want to avoid here is his eyebrow looking a bit weird. So this will look a lot better once we've done this. You will need to have the stitches taken out in about five to seven days. Okay. Can I hold hand if you want, Bob? Yeah, he's doing really well. So you will have a little bit of a Harry Potter scar, but um, oh, not m <laughs> the eyebrow obviously will cover m the majority of it. Okay, relax, fella. You're doing well. There we are. Hello. You coming round a little bit? Mm. Should we take all this off then? Did you have some dreams? Yeah. What did you dream about? Dogs in the playground. Dogs in the playground? Mm. Wow. What sort of dogs? Big ones or small ones? Pugs. Pugs? <laughs> <laughs> the children, when they're given ketamine, they often will have lovely dreams. They'll dream of fairies or whatever children are into these days. It's the adults that have the scary ones. All good? Are you happy to take him round to...? Yeah, he's going to have some breakfast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Back in the hub, Nurse Ravensdale is halfway through her shift. So this other lady here is called Barbara. She uh, fell down a couple of steps. She's just tripped on her slippers, and then she's tripped with her slippers again in the kitchen. So she had a bit of a clumsy day, really, because she fell on a hip. So she's going to go for an x-ray. I'll put request card in there. Uh, it looks all right. Beautiful. All right, I'll pop her in box. Her next patient is in the walk-in assessment area, presenting with her favourite type of injury. I don't know what it is about wounds, but I've always liked wounds. If you can give me a great wound, I would have a time of my life. Raymond Bucknell, I uh, come on through. Right, Ray, what have you been up to? Oh, He's been playing. Me. Been playing with what? <clears throat> a roller shutter door. Are you able to just give your hand a wash? Is that yeah. right? Just to get rid of that dry blood. So be careful, because it will stink. Ooh, it's not that way you think to yourself. Hey, there's a lot of blood everywhere, nine times out of ten in any, because it's my last version rather than anything else. But once you clean it off, you kind of look and you think, what was there? How have they done that, really? <laughs> a lot of it is, what was there? How's that happened? Hey, do I look messy? Mm. Yeah. Right, you have a sit down with that. Yeah, I'm, just okay. going, I'm just going to grab a bandage just yeah. to bandage it all up, all right? Just applies a bit of pressure to it. Right, okay. There it is, uh, so what were you doing with the roll of the door? Well, I'm trying to help Lado to get to get it down because the shutter blood, the shutter wouldn't work properly. Okay. And it got fast somewhere. And then you've 
So, Try to pull it. Yeah, and the roller itself just cut. Decided to drop on my hand. I'll do anything for attention. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to grab a seat in Wellington area, nurse Patricia will come and see you and then take it from there on. Okay, thank you very much. All right, no worries. Okay, bye. Come on, I'm not I can't wait to get home. I've got chicken dinner again. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Lead nurse Neil's staffing problems are compounded. A sister Wainwright has fallen seriously ill and is admitted to an assessment bay. She's hot, she's sweaty, uh, heart rate's up. What else? <laughs> And she's coughing really bad? Yeah. I'm not happy about it. <laughs> well. Me and Tom have a love-hate relationship, I think. Um, yeah, I came to her. Actually, it'd been quite unwell for a couple of weeks. To stress the strange you guys probably on I'm proper sweating. I hate going to the doctors. <laughs> Refused to um, get fixed. Just trying to stop, sit back and put the okay. Be a good patient. Benita was a nightmare of a patient because she knew everything that was happening, she knew everything that needed to happen. Sometimes, as a manager, you need to make the right decisions to know you are not fit to work. It's in the best interest of everyone, yourself included. If you get on that bed, you shut up and you just be a patient and be nice. Just so my heart rate needs to be less than that. Pretty magic. Do you want me to do it again? Yeah. I'm staying in the system. So, how do I reprint? Wait, just repress it again. Is that better? No. Clearly you're not well, so it's important that the staff, if they're not feeling well, they can't be at work, it's not good for them. People like Benita, you've physically got to throw them out of the department when they're, when they're ill and they're not. They'll come in and you say, no, you can't be here, you've got to go home. And they say, no, 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 I'm fine. And you get to a point where you say, no, you're going home. <coughs> Sorry, John, I keep coughing all over you. You know, I, I, I can't really do anything about it. We're having a now. I'm round to see Benita. Yep. Um, she's going to go home sick. Uh, she's not well at all, so yeah. she's, um, she's going home with some antibiotics. The day shift is nearly done, and the next team of Barnsley casualty staff are clocking on. For Benita, her shift ends early. It turned out I had a chest infection. Probably should have dealt with it slightly earlier than I did. So I had some antibiotics and went home. <laughs> I don't think it even constitutes a shift, does it? It's a poor attempt to at shift. After three further days of treatment at Barnsley Hospital, Hazel Booth sadly passed away. Next time. And there's a man that's just come in. He's, he's a tracheostomy patient. He's really unwell. Have you got any pain? No. No? no. I'm guessing you don't want any either, eh? No. So what makes you know that he's fitting now? Because I don't know all of them. What's going on? Car crash. I don't know how it happened. It's another demanding shift at Casualty 24-7. You've got a pneumonia on the left-hand side at the bottom. Right. And probably a little bit on the right-hand side.